Right, the big question that I'm posing in this video is, do you know how to adjust your driver settings correctly? And the important thing is that word correctly. How many times have you been and got custom fit for a driver, walked away, played for a few rounds, and then decided you're gonna have a little bit of a tweak and a mess around with your driver settings? Totally different than what the custom fitting advised in the first place, make some changes, and then things don't go quite according to plan. So when you get that new driver, you get a little bit of a packet with a tool inside it, a little bit of paper with a diagram on it that explains what all the little notches mean on that hosel and the changes that you make and what they're supposedly to do with your swing. But do you realize the implications of getting that wrong and how much of an adverse effect it can have on your performance out on the golf course? I know we all do it because I've been guilty of it myself. So what I'm gonna do is go and talk to a custom fit specialist and find out how, if we're gonna adjust the driver, how we should be doing it and making sure we understand the implications of those changes. Right, so alongside me, I have custom fit specialist at 4Golf, James Hughes. I'm in your full title today. Thank you. Um, we're gonna look at, we're gonna start off, we've got three of the major brands and we're going to look at how they each differ in their adjustability. Because I'll be honest with you, I think it's quite surprising just how many changes there are between each of the yeah, different yeah. drivers. Yeah. And I wonder how many people out there understand what those variables are. And I was hoping that what you could do is start off with the ping head and give me some examples of basic scenarios and then what their supposed kind of yeah. outcomes are supposed to happen. And maybe how it differs from the other two models that we've got on the table. Yeah. So we'll start with the G425. Yep. Uh, we've got the max head here, so uh, fully adjustable on weight. We've got the 10.5 loft variation there. And effectively, there's a few options that we can do with the loft sleeve and the weight. Yeah. So first thing to explain would be with the loft sleeve. So at neutral, this, this club would be 10.5. And as an example, we would go from 10.5. If you wanted to loft this club higher, yeah. that will ever so slightly just shut the face a little bit, okay. uh, which will help promote a slightly more right to left shape. So that's the first impact, because that's the thing I want to highlight, is there's an impact by doing things. So increase in loft so in the ping. Increase in loft in the ping, on, on ping specifically. And yeah. it, it can do on others, but let's talk about ping just yeah. for a second. So people think that sometimes lofting the club higher yeah. doesn't do anything to the face. Yeah. When in Ping's world, it does. It ever Because the assumption would be it just maybe yeah, increases Yeah, so if someone wants to see the ball just fly a little bit higher, that's fine, it will yeah. do that. Yeah. But it will also help to alter the flight as well, whether they the want face. that or not. Yeah. yeah, so I have a slightly closed the face. So a lot of people, when, when I'm fitting, they'll think, oh, you've, you've shut the face, you've lowered the loft. Yes. When, in fact, it's not, it's, it's, it's actually okay. made it go higher. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so we can put it to plus one degree, but could put it also to plus 1.5 degrees. But, right. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a very common adjustment yeah. in, in a ping driver. It's a common adjustment, but there is impact on the face. That's yeah. the point. Yeah, that's the point in ping. Yeah. Yes. And then you can, with the ping driver, again, I'm being specific to this model, flatten the lie. You can. So it's, again, quite specific to ping. So we can flatten off the lie, which really in ping's world, you're better off to flatten the lie if you're struggling with the left side of the golf course. Yeah. So if you're struggling hitting the ball too far to the left, yeah. then an option of, of the 425 model is we can flatten the lie off yeah. um, and that will help start the ball further right in its travel. So you're opening so the face effectively. Effectively, yeah, a little bit an, or impact, not. Yeah. Yeah, an impact. Um, we, if you lower the loft on a ping driver, that will open the face. Yeah. But what we're doing here is changing the tilt of the head. Yeah. So that will help prom promote more of the right side of the golf course okay. rather than the left side of the golf course. So um, that's not not one that people use often. No. They, they sort of don't necessarily understand it or they don't yeah, yeah. maybe. Well, that's the danger we're trying to highlight is by tinkering around. They've already said in the intro that the idea is leave well alone or go back to yeah, a custom specialist, I mean, but it's dangerous. But essentially, so that for the ping driver head, the two things really, I mean, obviously you would assume that everybody knows, that, like you said, how to increase and decrease loft. You'd assume. also assume, and again, yeah. but just to be, you know, this sliding weight port at the back yeah. to a draw and fade bias, very much obvious, but it's yeah. the impacts it has that 
I want to make sure people understand. So moving from the loft sleeve to, to the weight distribution here, so this is a tungsten weight which is has a quite a big impact in terms of flight. Yeah. So we can take it from the centre there and we can move it over to the heel or we yeah. can move it over to the toe. Obviously putting it towards the heel, I mean it does say draw in yeah. the in the setting there. That will help promote a draw shape. But again it could be down to the fact that you you're gonna benefit from the weight being in the heel if you have a heel strike. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily automatically Just, mean you're gonna draw yeah, it. Yeah. It will Places the maximum, CG yeah, in a position so moving where... the centre of gravity away towards the heel. So if you're a heel striker of the ball, you're going to just going to increase your ball speed by moving that towards the heel, vice versa. If you toe, if you put it towards the toe into the fade position, and you're a toe striker of the ball, you're going to improve your ball speed from off centre strikes yeah, yeah. in that sense. But it's all down to ball flight. You know, yeah, yeah. We're, we're trying to maximise or we're trying to make the best ball flight of a situation. And yeah, they, that's the importance really of fitting. Obviously, yeah. we'd argue fitting is, is really, really Essential. important for, for any yeah, golf yeah. club. But um, we, we understand that there's a lot of people that will buy these clubs and they'll try it themselves. Yeah. And they'll, they'll spend hours on a driving range or on a practice ground tinkering, tinkering. it and tinkering. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. part of the fun. You've got to understand what it does and, and how it does it. So, yeah. So that's hopefully explained. And again, we're only briefly looking at these things as, for me, what it highlights already with one chat about one driver ahead is the importance of speaking uh, to a custom fit specialist. But like James already said, if you are going to tinker around yourself, that you fully understand the implications of making the changes and what impacts they then have on your swing. So that's the ping done. It's now time to move on. Right, so that's ping done and next up is the Callaway head. And first of all, for me, this one gets a little bit more complicated because uh, there are multiple moving parts. And when I say multiple, <laughs> there's two. Yeah. And it's the OptiFit hosel. And uh, like I said, there's two bits that get adjusted here. What is the main difference between the adjustability in the Callaway to the ping, let's say, first of all? The Callaway is probably the club that people get confused the most with because of the fact that it's got the dual sleeve if you like on yeah, the yeah. fit. Yeah. So many people think that so there's there's an S, there's an N, there's a D, there's a minus one, there's a plus one, there's a plus two. You know, there's a lot of different variations there, which I think it's straightforward because you do that's, that's what we're doing. But it's even people that have played golf and have had many a Callaway club and know a lot about golf or a lot about golf clubs get quite confused yeah, yeah. with with this system. So um Main difference between a Callaway and maybe like a ping that we just talked about there is we're we're not able to flatten the lie on this on this particular model. Yeah. Um, we can promote more of a draw shape <clears throat> and make it a little bit more upright. Uh, but yeah, we that's one of the main differences with that. But uh, we see this as the one that confuses people the most. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think one of the things as well, and I think is dangerous, is there's a little tiny white mark there. That is the bit that everything has to be aligned yeah, yeah. in and if you haven't got that right and yeah, I, I think so I, I did it yesterday did when it I was yesterday, showing you something yeah, so, and straight uh, away it wasn't in the position that I thought it was in it's 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 not absolutely imperative but it's you know to yeah. keep everything in line I mean a lot of the new Callaway clubs have got the, the line grip there yeah. so unless you have the white dot aligned with the hosel white yeah, yeah. dot where the loft is then your grip's going to be offline, yeah, yeah. which isn't ideal, but um, but yeah. So and what what are some of the common settings then? Give me an example of within there. If we've got the, the so bottom, if you've got a we've got the Epic Max ten point five degree driver here, for example. So a lot of the time we see that people want it at ten five, but they want to have a slight draw yeah. biasing in their in their hosel setting before we even move on to, to the, the, head. To, yeah. the to the to the weighting on the head itself. So. So we want S for stated loft yeah. and then D for draw. So that's relatively straightforward. So you line them up and then yeah. screw in as yeah. normal. Um, Is it a common theme then to have a draw bias setting and then move the weight in the head to a draw bias setting as well? Yeah, Would that be there's, a there's a couple of ways of looking at it. So you can, if you want maximum draw, if you're a real slicer of the ball, yeah. you would best to, to maybe add a little bit of loft. So at least go to maybe plus one because that's going to help reduce your side spin, yeah. your fade spin or your, your spin to the right. Um, and then you could in turn uh, put it into plus one D, pop the head on, and then alter accordingly towards having the weight towards the heel. Yeah. If you're trying to maximize your draw, what a lot of people will do, we'll, we'll look after the loft in terms of the height. Yeah. Because again, another reason of Callaway being different to, to Ping, 
we can independently loft this club yeah independent of face yeah so that's quite a so, so just to explain on the ping when you were when you were adding or decreasing loft yeah. it was changing the, the you're ever so slightly changing open or closing the face exactly so with this so you add the loft we add loft and that will if we if we want it to so we can go n for neutral head yeah, yeah. Uh, and plus one in terms of a loft there so that will change your launch yeah, in terms of your launch but not window affect that face. and not affect the face but you also can pop it into draw if that's what you want it to do yeah so um that's and quite popping it into draw would then shut the face a little bit would it yeah yeah so it'll make it a little bit more upright, more upright and it'll yeah. like the old school offset yeah, yeah so it'll just ever so slightly offset the head and, yeah. and slightly toe in uh, and a lot of people tend to do that before then looking at the weight yeah. to try and fix their direction yeah and then move on to then the sort of really drilling down in terms of maximizing performance is a bit, like we, a bit like we spoke about with the ping before is we position the weight based on their set, on mm. their strike pattern in terms off the face yeah so that's one way of looking at it some people like to look at it as if i maximize my draw weight i'm going to help promote as much yeah. draw shape as possible yeah. um and vice versa for the heel one so um yeah lots quite a lot of adjustment there so again if you bought it off the shelf if you've bought it online or whatever then it's a lot to you know you could spend hours tweaking this yeah. and still not know where you're going but yeah. um again as we said before that's all part of the fun of it for a lot of people but if you just want to make sure it's right and get it right again take these drivers take them to your fitting centers local mm. to you and just pay for the fitting or and spend mm. half an hour three quarters of an hour and get it right because it's a lot of money yeah yeah to get wrong you yeah, know, and yeah. yeah, that's what we see a lot. But of. the interesting thing for me, like I said, and perhaps that um, is overlooked massively, is the fact that already two driver heads, you know, two manufacturers, two quite different uh, ways in which to alter the golf club setup, where you'd have assumed maybe that there's a kind of streamlined approach to all three. So that leaves us just one to go, and we'll move on to the tailor-made product. Right, last but not least is the tailor-made product. And uh, before we go on to the differences in the adjustability to the previous two products, one thing is noticeable is no sliding weight in the SIM product this year. I think it's the first time they've done it. Is that right? Yeah, so um, what they found last time, where they've, they've had a sliding weight in one of their drivers over the last few years. Um, that does quite drastically bring the CG quite quite close Forward. to the face uh, which is fantastic for optimal performance if you hit the middle but they found that even the tour guys were using the adjustability as far back as they could get yeah, it yeah. To, to maximize their consistency and their sort of forgiveness element so they've got rid of the, the, yeah. the, the sliding weight and they've moved it as far back as, as, as they can so um, so so then go into the the hosel adjustments again um first of all then how does it differ from the the previous two models that we looked at brand so well? we're slightly more in line with the ping compared to we are with the with the with the callaway so for example again if you adjust loft on these clubs on the turner made sim sim 2 then you are altering face yeah so uh again compared to ping it's this you can move this to upright lie rather than a flatter Flat, lie yeah. so that's again you can't alter the weight obviously as we just discussed there so yeah if you want so with them to, with them having all these different it's a custom fit question this rather than adjustability mm. but with them all having the different nuances that they've got is there sometimes then a, a when you do a custom fit with somebody is there one of these products that would lean them towards if there's a particular shot shape is it any one of these favors um i would say just through personal experience that if you're a slicer of the ball yeah. and you want to and you you're struggling with the right side of the golf yeah. course then arguably i'm going to give you a ping non-adjustable weight yeah in the sft right because then that maximizes your yeah, yeah. draw potential yeah. but um they're all each to their own it's yeah people ask me the question all the time oh, what's the best driver yeah well there's no such thing no. it's what works for Fits you, for you it's what yeah. works for that player what works for their ball flight characteristic and and yeah so there's no real such no. thing as what's okay. best so back to the hosel yeah and the fit system give me two examples so if, uh, if somebody walks in or if sorry not walks in because this is somebody effective this video is about somebody who's sitting at home and likes to mess around and understanding what they're doing so let's say the fella at home at the minute 
is a uh, he slices the ball yeah. and he wants to make he wants to get that set in right. What would okay. he be looking at? So you got at home, he's bought the club, yeah. loves it, Taylor made fan, you know, as as any of the uh, brand fans are. And they are struggling with a slice. Yeah. So we've got the Sim2 Max here, the 10.5. So we were 10.5 throughout. So a neutral face and he's slicing it. Slicing it. Yeah. So for him, again, the same sort of theory as, uh, as some of the others, but slightly tweaked is we can make the lie angle more upright, yeah. which will tilt the head yeah. so, to help promote more of a draw shape. Yeah. So that close a little bit? Yeah, it'll offset the club face yeah, yeah. ever so slightly. Um, and also to help him reduce his fade or slice, depending yeah. on how high it's going, is popping a bit more loft in there as well. Yeah. So again, there's there's three different higher lofts and three different lower lofts you can do with, with the pin club. Okay. So I probably pop it one notch higher on a 10.5 into upright lie angle. And are these very obvious settings here in terms um, of what you're looking at there? Yes and, what, and no. What I'm um, at. I would say, depend again, depending on ball flight, but if you're trying to hit the ball with more of a draw and you struggle with a, with a slice or a fade with your Sim 2 Max, then pop it into the upright lie setting and one notch higher. Yeah. Just basically, and try that. When you walk away, you get, I don't know whether we've got one, you get a little pack with, with your uh, tool, I suppose with some diagrams on the back, but if you've still not got that to hand or you don't take the time to, to sort of look online, then even understanding what those little notches that we're referring yeah. to them as, but I think it can still be confusing. That you, you know, we don't all gonna understand that that is the case. Yeah. And again, with this club, if you're struggling with the left side of the golf yeah, course, yeah. you wanna hit it further right, then if you lower the loft, in the non upright lie angle. Yeah. So we go back to then neutral and then go lower. That will then slightly open the face and it'll allow yeah. you to hit it, start it a little bit further yeah. to, towards the right. So, but again, it's trial and error. You've got to have a little play yeah. around with them. It's trial and error, but certainly, surely there must be some things that are completely working against your swing type. If you've got, if you put something in a complete wrong setting, then it's got to have an adverse effect on your your uh, yeah. So outcome, if you surely. if you for example were a hooker of the ball and you put this club into upright and higher yeah you're probably going to hit it yeah. to the left yeah. you know but it, a lot of it depends on the delivery of the club you know yeah. it's, uh, there's no hard and fast rule but yeah it's uh, i just think it's like i said it's uh, it's uh, brilliant thanks james for those uh, three explanations but for me personally i mean from uh coming here for years and doing exactly what i've just explained bought a driver got custom fit then all of a sudden, three months later, not hitting the ball so well, blame the driver or the setup, start messing around, and all of a sudden I've got a setting which I've got no idea what I've just done, and it's potentially working in a complete adverse uh, situation than what I initially got custom fit for. So for me, going back to the beginning of the video, the idea is I still am a real advocate of custom fit. I always think it's mega important, and I think if you do take it away and things go wrong, or perhaps we said about your swing changes over a period of time, then again, go back, you don't need to buy a new drive, but go back into the custom fit situation and let an expert make those changes. But if you are going to uh, make the change yourself, then it's important that you understand them. And hopefully we've given you a few examples there of uh, what the change, not so much the changes, now you, you make the, the change in terms of the hosel and the different fits, but the impacts those changes have on, uh, on your potential outcome. That's it, mate, done. That's it. Spot on. I think the way we'll finish is... Um, if you like the video, as ever, then hit that like button. But your comments down below, what I'd like to hear is, first of all, your own experiences of um, custom fit, but more importantly about the adjustments that you make your own driver settings. Are you doing this independently or are you taking advice of a custom fitter? And the final point is, we've picked three brands here. There's probably just glancing around, there's at least another three that we could have a look at the settings on those as well. So if you'd like that, then post it in the comments section below. Uh, as ever, thank you for watching. We'll see you soon. Cheers, Jim. Cheers, Ant. Thank you.